Hi everyone, today we have another lesson on measurement. Now yesterday you got to measure something or a group of things in your house using whatever unit you wanted. I saw you using so many good ideas for your units. I saw people using paper clips or Legos or Unifix cubes. I saw magnetiles. I, somebody even used Nintendo Switch controllers. You can measure with anything, right? I said you got to choose your unit as long as it was relatively small, and you did. I saw units that were touching each other without big gaps in between. I saw that your units were not overlapping. Lapping. I saw that you were using good measuring habits. So great job measuring yesterday. Today we get to measure again, but actually this time we're all going to use the same unit. Today's unit is going to be a pencil. So hopefully you have a pencil at home. Now it doesn't really matter what size your pencil is because we're all going to have a different length of pencil, right? But I would prefer if your pencil was long-ish, like this pencil is long-ish. Sometimes first graders like to sharpen their pencils down to about this big, like a teeny, teeny, tiny little pencil. And that's not really going to help us be the best measurers today. So if you could just make sure your pencil is just a normal length, that would be wonderful. Okay, so we're all going to have the same unit, but you're going to be measuring different things. Now, when we measure with one unit, we have to have some good practices in place. Yesterday, you had a group of things that you were using to measure, like you had a bunch of paper clips that you could lay out next to each other without them touching. When you just have one, of the unit, you have to make sure that you're still measuring correctly. So I'm going to show you over here this chair and I'll show you how I'll measure the chair. So today we get to choose something quite a bit larger to measure than yesterday. Yesterday I asked you to find some pretty small toys or objects in your home to measure. Today you're going to choose one larger thing. It could be a whole room if you want to measure the length of a room or maybe you have like a rug on the floor or a piece of furniture. I'm going to do a piece of furniture here. This is a chair that I have in my house and I want to show you that if I'm using a pencil to measure, I'm going to measure like the, the back across this chair here, um, I have to make sure that my end of my pencil touches the end of the chair right here doesn't hang over and it doesn't start somewhere in the middle. It needs to come right to the end right here. And then the most important thing I have to do is mark where the pencil ends on the chair. Now I'm not going to draw on my furniture to do that. I'm just going to mark the end of the pencil here with my finger. And then I'm going to pick the pencil up and move it to the other side of my finger here and hold it down firm. Now I can say that this was one pencil length, two pencil lengths. I mark it again at the end, move my pencil, three pencil lengths, mark it again at the end, move my pencil. And you can see my pencil does hang off just a little bit. So I'm going to say that the back of this chair is almost four pencil lengths. Is it exactly? No, it's not. It's almost, and we talked yesterday about using words like about or almost when we're describing our measurements of non-standard units because our measurements are not going to be exact when we're using a pencil to measure, right? So your job today is to choose something larger in your house and to measure it with a pencil. You're going to use the words about or almost to describe the measurement. If you'd like to choose more than one thing, that would be fine too. Now, I don't necessarily expect you to take a picture of doing this. You are welcome to take a picture of this process if you can. But if you're doing it by yourself and you don't have anyone to take a picture of it, then you can just write down with words or record your voice telling me what you measured with your pencil and about how many pencil lengths that thing was. 
I'm very curious to see what you're going to come up with for your item to measure. The other thing you're doing today in math is two pages in your math journal. So um, I'm going to ask you to do page 42, which is a page of math boxes, as well as page 44. Um, our warm-up questions today would have been all about the number grid. So we're not going to do the warm-up questions here in this video. I'll have you do this page in your math journal to keep practicing that number grid because that's something we're going to keep using all year long. So make sure you're using the number grid to subtract on page 44. So you'll post your item that you measured and the two pages of your math journal in Seesaw for me to see. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.